Hi, my name is Jared Gull. I work for Juniper Networks in the Education Services Department. And today I'll be sharing a learning bite related to virtual chassis troubleshooting. In this learning bite, we've got two main sections. The first section we cover is related to virtual chassis formation. We'll look at some of the key details related to the formation process and some of the pitfalls, some of the issues that might arise during that formation process. And then the last section, we'll look at a demo and uh, kind of tie in some of the concepts that we've discussed in the first section and illustrate some of the key commands of how you would go about verifying status and resolving a couple of the issues identified in the first section. During the formation process of a virtual chassis, each member will be assigned or will assume a member ID um, and a respective role, whether the role be a routing engine in the master or backup role or a line card. The member IDs um, can range between 0 and 9 depending on the deployment and the member ID and the member role can either be assigned uh, through a pre-provisioned or a static configuration or through a dynamic process that's performed by the uh, members selected as the master routing engine for the virtual chassis. The expected or desired state um, is that each member would be listed in the output of the show virtual chassis status command and um, each member would have a member ID and would have a status of present. So that's regardless of the role. They should all have uh, their assigned member ID and status. Now, as you know, not everything works as it should 100% of the time. Uh, there are issues that could arise. As far as virtual chassis formation issues go, the issues in that process can generally be categorized into three different groups, into one of three groups. There's physical issues, there's software issues, and there are potentially configuration issues. Uh, as far as physical issues go, this could be uh, the virtual ch chassis member switch that's misbehaving um, or failing in some way, the virtual chassis port on the member switch, um, or the virtual chassis cable that interconnects member switches within a VC. As far as software issues go, you could have a version mismatch uh, you could also have software bugs. They do exist. They do pop up from time to time. So just uh, keep that in the back of your mind that that could be contributing to an issue. Uh, and then configuration issues. If you're working with a pre-provisioned deployment or a virtual chassis that uses a pre-provisioned configuration, if that configuration is not complete or accurate, you could see issues there as well. So we listed uh, earlier that uh, we showed earlier in the output that um, the desired status is present. Some of the other status indicators that could pop up during a, a virtual chassis deployment, you could see an inactive state, uh, not present state, or an unprovisioned state. The inactive state, this is uh, something you might see if you're adding a member switch that's not running the same version as the virtual chassis. And that also assumes that you do not have the auto update option enabled, which will essentially detect that software version mismatch and perform an upgrade automatically. Um, the not present status, this is a status that you might see if uh, there's been a problem with the virtual chassis cable that connects that particular switch, that member, to the other members within the VC, um, or a port's been disabled or a port's failed. And then the unprovisioned state, this is uh, a status you would see in a, a pre-provisioned deployment scenario 
where that particular um, member, the, the, the member associated with the serial number on that line item is not added or not added correctly into the, the pre-provision configuration. Okay, now we'll move into the second portion of the learning byte, which is a demonstration, um, a troubleshooting example. The objective and topology details are shown here on the slide. We've got a four-member virtual chassis interconnected as shown on the left-hand side. There's your wiring details. Uh, and then this is a pre-provisioned virtual chassis with the configuration details shown on the right. Um, so let's move into the environment here. We've got uh, the first thing that you'll want to do is verify the current status and you can do that with the show virtual chassis status command. So here we see um, four line items. Uh, two are the routing engines and they're in the present status. And then we've got member three which is uh, in the not present status and then we've got a fourth line item that does not yet have a member ID and is in the unprovisioned status. If you remember back to our previous discussion uh, the not present status is typically an indication of uh, a connectivity issue whether it be the virtual chassis cable or the VC port uh, on one side or the other uh, in the failed state or a disabled state so we'll verify that and then the uh, the unprovisioned state is indicative of um, a member trying to join the virtual chassis that uh, is not part of the uh, pre-provisioned configuration so we'll have to look at uh, what's configured now and potentially remedy that with some change there so the first thing let's deal with uh, member three first uh, we'll verify the port status uh, the, of the virtual chassis ports and you can do that with the uh, show virtual chassis VC dash port command and here we see for member zero based on our illustration member zero should be connecting to member three over its VCP dash one port and that connects into member three on its VCP dash zero so based on the output we see here that VCP1 on member 0 is currently in the disabled status so we know that's a problem uh, there could be potentially other problems but we know for sure that that needs to be enabled so let's start with that to enable uh, the VCP1 port on member 0 you issue the request virtual chassis VC port set interface and then reference that VCP interface which is VCP-1 and you can also specify the member um, it defaults to member 0 but I'll just show uh, that option here so member 0 if that were a port on uh, member 1 through whatever uh, you would reference that other member value here so and then we can issue the the show virtual chassis VC port command again to verify the status uh, hopefully it's in the up sat, uh, status and it is and now we actually see uh, FPC3 added that's a good sign and both of its VCP interfaces are up as well so just to close that loop let's um, issue the show virtual chassis status command again and now we see that um, member 3 or FPC 3 is in, in the present status rather than the not present so okay so we're good there the next uh, issue that we'll try to resolve here is uh, the the line item at the bottom um, which has a serial number of BM 02081051970 based on our diagram on the slide that looks like the right um, serial number so let's uh, move into configuration mode 
navigate to the edit virtual chassis hierarchy and view the configuration there. Um, we're focusing on member two. It's got a roll of line card and it looks like the serial number is uh, has been entered incorrectly instead of uh, 5197 it looks like we have 5196 so let's correct that you can correct that uh, pretty easily with the replace command so replace pattern and we'll replace this value here with the same value except um, 5197 at the end and then we'll need to commit that okay once the commit completes we can leave uh, configuration mode so let's exit and then let's verify the status. It may take just a moment that uh, member um, that has to, there's a communication process that has to go on there. So let's just uh, verify that with the show virtual chassis status command. And here we see that uh, member two has now been added successfully and is in the present state and has uh, assumed the correct role of line card. So that concludes our demonstration and our learning bite. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.